What's going on guys? So in this video I'm going to be showing you how I accomplished this LED mod inside my Xbox. Alrighty, so some of the things we're going to need are some solder. We're also going to need some wire and preferably some quick disconnects to make removing the top casing of the Xbox easier. We're also going to need some of these LED ring lights. We just need one. You can buy these on eBay, they're very cheap. They're actually for car headlights, but they seem to fit perfectly behind the logo. We're also going to need a Torx T20 screwdriver. It doesn't have to be a security bit, just a standard size. We're also going to need some wire cutters as well and some heat shrink or some kind of insulator. Okay, to get things started, we're gonna have to flip the Xbox over and remove the six T20 Torx screws from the base of the console. To remove the corner screws, you can just lift up the rubber feet just halfway. You don't have to completely remove them and just undo the screws like shown. Once you get all the screws removed, just flip the console back over and gently remove the top housing. To power this LED mod, we're going to be borrowing 12 volts from the hard drive power connector. Don't worry about power requirements here because the LEDs are very low current and the Xbox only has a single 12 volt rail anyway, so it wouldn't matter where you get it from. Now just gently fold back the 40 pin ribbon cable and disconnect it like shown. Now just remove the power cable from the hard drive as well. You can use a small blunt pencil shaped object to try and wiggle it out. Just be gentle with it, you don't want to break the wires. Now with the hard drive power cable removed, we can snip the yellow and black wires. The yellow wire is 12 volt positive rail and the black wire is ground. Okay, strip back at least a centimeter of shielding from each of the wires including the wires for your LED. Now just twist the two yellow wires and the positive wire for your LED together, solder them together and insulate them. Do the same for the ground wire as well. And you should have something that looks a bit like this. We're just basically just splicing into the 12 volt wire for the hard drive and this will supply power for our LED mod. Now to mount the LEDs behind the logo, we're going to need to remove the top RF shielding from the top housing of the console. We're not going to be reinstalling the shielding, so it doesn't matter if it gets a bit scratched up. All we need to do is just bend back the metal tabs that are holding down the shielding to the plastic standoffs in the top of the console housing. As you can see, I'm just using a small flat blade screwdriver to try and bend it back up. You can use a pair of pointy nose pliers, whatever works for you. Once we have the top shielding removed, we can work out how we want to align the LEDs behind the logo. Depending on the diameter of the ring you get, you can either have the LEDs facing inwards towards the motherboard, or you can reverse them and have them facing the back of the logo. This works good if the ring you've got is a bit smaller than the logo, like what I've got here, and it creates a really nice soft splashback effect and you don't get the individual hot spots from the LEDs. Once we've worked that out, it's time to do a dry fit. Just using a piece of tape or something, you can hold the LEDs where you want them on the logo and then put the top housing back on the console and turn it on. If you like the way it all fits together, then just use some glue. I'm using a soft set rubber glue, but you can also use hot glue as well. I just didn't have any on hand. Whichever glue you end up choosing, make sure it's a clear one. This will help diffuse the light a little bit more and prevent any shadows. Once everything's all set together, just reorganize your cables, close the console back up, and enjoy your new LED mod. If you don't want the LED mod to be turned on all the time, all you have to do is just use a simple inline switch between the 12 volt rail and the LED, and all you have to do is just mount it somewhere discreetly on the console so you can turn the LEDs on and off. I didn't do that on my arm because I didn't really want to cut any holes into the system, but if you want to do that, go ahead, no troubles. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas for new tutorials you want to see, leave a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. And until next time, see ya.